This evening's next Skoll Award for Social Entrepreneurship goes to Sal Khan of Khan Academy. It's a, it's a real, real honor, and, and, and following up on what Mushtaq just said, I can tell you sitting next to him is actually infectious. Uh, when, when, at, when Annie asked, asked all the women to stand up, he stand up, and he said, he, he said I am also a woman. So that was a, a very... Um, his. And, and we're honored to be, be working with them. Uh, the, the one thing that, that you know, I want to emphasize uh, is, you know, although this did start as kind of one-person project literally in a closet, uh, it's now much, much, much larger than me. Uh, we're now a team of 40 people formally, and frankly, we have hundreds or frankly thousands of volunteers around the world who are taking our content to villages, uh, uh, partners like, like the Citizens Foundations. We have people who are translating the content, and they're really the people that are going to make it a reality. Uh, without them, you know, our mission statement is a free world-class education for anyone, anywhere. Uh, but, but without them, it's a, it's a, it's a free world-class education for the English-speaking world who happen to have broadband access. And, 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 but we, but we, we, we think we can change that. Well, one thing I, I tell my team all, all the time is, you know, a lot of people talk in terms of, you know, things being a, a once in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, but one thing that's starting to dawn on, on us, and, and it's, it's a little surreal, and, and it, it feels like we're in the middle of a science fiction book, uh, this actually feels like a once in a, a millennium opportunity. Uh, you have these inflection points in history, you have the colonization of North America, you have these new institutions pop up, the, you know, the Ivy League schools, you have the Industrial Revolution, all sorts of new institutions pop up, schools of engineering. Uh, we're, we're now in, in probably the biggest inflection point in history, and frankly, we're at the, the very, very early stages of it. And, and it was a delusion uh, for, for one guy in a closet, literally two years ago, to, to think that maybe this could be uh, one of those institutions that take advantage of the, of the next inflection point. Uh, but, but frankly, with, with help from folks like y'all, partners like Mushtaq and the Citizens Foundation, it's starting to become more and more of a reality. And, and to just get a sense of it, you know, I used to give talks and, and I used to say, you know, one day this, this might be used in, in Mongolia. And then a, a few months ago, we actually got a letter from Mongolia. Uh, I, was, I was very excited, a, a young girl named Zaya. And uh, she actually sent a little YouTube video uh, saying, hey, I love Khan Academy. She was 15 years old when she sent it. Uh, this is great. I use it for all my studies. And at first I said, well, this is great. She must be a middle class uh, young girl. Uh, she has access to a computer and broadband. Uh, but then I, I actually read the text of the email a little bit more carefully. It, it turns out that there was a group from, from Cisco Systems in Silicon Valley that they used their own vacation time uh, to travel to Mongolia and set up computer labs with broadband in orphanages in, in Mongolia. And Zaya was one of the orphans at that school. And, and that by itself was kind of surreal and, and crazy for, for all of us. But then it got even stranger. Uh, Zaya has now, she's 17 years old, uh, she's now become our prime producer of content in the Mongolian language. And, uh, And, and these are small stories right now, where, and, and it, it reminds us that we're at the very early stage of, frankly, what, what, what all of us are working at. But what's exciting for us at the Khan Academy, and, and we're partnering with all of you guys, is historically philanthropy has been around looking at what the middle class or, or the rich have and say, well, that's good, but, but that's resource intensive. Uh, uh, maybe we can create a cheaper version for, for the poor because they, they have nothing else. Uh, what's exciting about what I think the next 5, 10, or 20 years is going to happen is, you know, famously, uh, Bill Gates uses Khan Academy with his children. And the reality that we're going into, we don't have to go to the Zayas of the world and say, oh, well, we're going to give you a cheap approximation of, of what the best is. Uh, the reality I, I hope to see is, is that we will give them the exact same thing that Bill Gates's children have. And, and so, uh, once again, a, a huge, huge, huge honor to be here, and, and I genuinely believe, I, you know, I, I think it's often darkest before the dawn, so to speak, uh, over the next 10, 20, 30 years, uh, this scarce resource, this resource that we real, literally view as the determining factor between the haves and the have-nots, uh, it will not be scarce, and, and it will be a, a fundamental human right, like clean drinking water or shelter. Thank you. <laughs>